mwisho la mpira wa miguu kwa watu wenye ulemavu wa viungo amputee Zanzibar. Kwanza niseme tu kwanza nawashukuruni kwa kuja katika presi yetu ya leo ya kumkaribisha mjeni wetu katibu mkuu wa shirikisho la mpira wa miguu duniani Mr. Simon Becker. Kwanza niseme ujio wa, wa kiongozi huyu umetupa mwanga kwa Zanzibar hususan shirikisho letu la mpira wa miguu kwa watu wenye ulemavu wa mpitii. Kwanza niseme tena ni wakaribishe tena Mr. Simon Becker na Mr. Shubas na Mr. Juan na Mr. Kaduma kwa support yao ya kuhakikisha kwamba Zanzibar tunafanikiwa katika kupata mafunzo haya. For service of this my profession and I work for physical education program in the International Committee of Red Cross ICRC. And it's a pleasure for, for me to be here uh, working with Zanzibar and Tutsi Football Federation and, and Ministry of the Sports and the Sports Council. And I, we are very delighted that uh, Zanzibar and Tutsi Football Federation has a good support from Ministry of the Sports and the Sports Council here in, in Zanzibar. And, and I'm also delighted in another way that we have a Simon Baker, General Secretary of the World and Tutsi Football Federation among us. And he will be uh, staying three, two, uh, three days uh, from today. And he will be giving a training to the coaches, confidence of the players, coaches, and the referees. And they will uh, play a very a good game. And they will attract a lot of tourists here in Zanzibar to come and watch the game. I see that uh, there is a good potential on the players. I have seen Zanzibar playing in, in Tanzania mainland uh, in, in the league matches and uh, in the championship. And we see that there will be a more players joining. You know, the, the people uh, uh, with amputation or uh, different type of uh, disability, if they play football, they, 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 their confidence is pushed up, not only for them, but also the people seeing them from the other side. They see the ability. And you know, the ability uh, is important. And you need to see the positive aspect, positive part of the, the area where people can, you see they are playing, they are jumping, they are moving around, they are making goals, and that shows all the ability. And this ability makes people uh, confidence level boost up, their mind uh, become working better, they are very positive influence, their family give it, start giving them um, uh, the respect which they need, and, and they look for a job, they go for employment, they go for study, you know. And I always say that football is inexpensive game. You don't need a lot of money to play football. Just you need a ball and you start playing. You know, I have seen that in Zanzibar, the people are playing in the in the beach on the on the sand, which is good. Uh, anybody with amputation or any kind of uh, uh, disability, they will be able to come and, and and play, and that is good. So it's one part of the amputee football is that you enjoy the game and you make it for your fun. And other part, of course, what Simon says that it has to be very serious. You need to be very, um, uh, do very disciplined. You need to be coach yourself in a regular basis if you really want to 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 uh, go forward and build your national team and you want to work in for your country. Then, of course, this is a different level of amputee football. But Zanzibar has a very great future ahead. So, thank you very much. Zanzibar Amputee Football for inviting me here. Thank you, RCRC. Many thanks, Zanzibar Federation. I'm looking forward to working closely with you. And also many thanks to the government and uh, other NGOs who have supported us. Um, yeah, I stand here before you as the World Amputee uh, Football Federation General Secretary. I'm also a consultant with this project with RCRC. Uh, and it gives me great honor to be here and to go around. I decided that I was going to run the Dublin Marathon, a full marathon, on the crutches without the prosthetic. I, my wife thought I was crazy. So what happened was is uh, I used to go out training in my street like this, and cars would stop in the road. Hey, are you okay? Do you need a lift? Is someone chasing <laughs> you? No, I'm training for a marathon. Oh, you are crazy? You should be back in the crazy house. I did the marathon. I completed it. I got a place in the Guinness Book of Records. It was never my thing. I still smoked. I still liked to drink. I never wanted to be in the Paralympics. But now, people saw the athlete, not the disabled guy. I can do what you can do. 
You can't do what I can do. I run a marathon on crutches. You have two legs. Give us the crutches. Come on, run the marathon with me. No. So for me, this was my certificate. I was really proud. Now people saw me differently. Through the media, positive media, people saw me different. This guy, go back. This guy, I run 26 and a half miles. Now this guy wants to give me a wheelchair? No, 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 sorry. This would be the best photo for the media. No. I decided I was going to get involved in a local boxing competition. Six weeks of intensive boxing training with a world-class, world, -class, world Olymp uh, Olympic medalist. It was running six weeks. For six weeks you would train. After six weeks you get in the ring and you fight. I went for the interview. They said to me, come on, you uh, only have one leg. Please give me the chance. I'm okay, I'm okay. Are you sure? This is Michael Carruth. He was a gold medal medalist. He said, okay, come on. I said, listen, don't treat me any different. If I'm tired, I'll sit. If I can't do it, I'll say. But just keep pushing me like the rest. And what did it do? Inclusion became my treat, and being treated the same as everyone else. What's different? What's different about any of the disabled people that play school? Nothing. Apart from the fact they're more determined than able-bodied people. Being seen the same as everyone else, okay? You know? And breaking down barriers. I felt sorry for this guy, because if he beat me, he was, he, everyone would say, ah, oh, you, you killed the disabled guy. And if he lost, <laughs> everyone would say, you lost to the disabled guy. So, in 2011, I decided I would walk from one place in Ireland to another, 257 kilometers in five days on my crutches. It was from here in Dublin all the way to my house. Why? Because I had good media, I had positive media, but we were walking through all the different towns and countries and letting people know, hey, look, this is me, I'm here, I'm here. All the time it was making me feel good. Not because they were, oh, aren't you great? They were, wow, you are crazy. <laughs> and we did it for a different charity. I did it for the children, the Irish Society for Prevention to Cruelty to Children. And we created awareness for their campaigns and the work they do. But every, all the time, everyone was looking at me and saying, wow. And we're breaking down barriers. So I used my disability to, to my advantage. Now, because I'm walking on crutches, I'm now making money for some, uh, 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 another charity. I decided, OK, I can't keep running marathons. I can't keep doing this crazy stuff. There must be other people like me who are crazy, who are amputees. Because when I went to find sport, they told me to get into a swimming pool. I didn't swim when I had two legs. Now I had one, I was only going to go around in circles. <laughs> then they said to me, get into the wheelchair. There's nothing wrong with the wheelchair. But I needed to be upright. If you're putting me in a wheelchair, you're telling me that's my life. I needed to be up. So I found some crazy guys, and I started the Irish Amputee Football Federation. <coughs> this was our first training session. When I first saw the guys play, I took the crutches from the car. We brought some players from England. I wanted to put the crutches back in the car. When I kicked the ball there, it went there. When I kicked it there, it went there. But through training, perseverance, positive media, go on. So never won, but we <laughs> captured them. And I captured them to one European Championships. And now I was wearing the same jersey as the Irish national team. see where we're going at the Dublin. Are going to ask, hopefully, maybe some of the Premier Clubs to adopt one of the league clubs in amputee football. At the moment, I think we could produce four clubs. Uh, it would probably only be five a side to start with. 
obviously we have some problems because some of the players live in further distance and we hope that one day a month we will run the league and we will hope that Zanzibar Football Federation will support us with facilities and that we will run the league uh, from, from there but the, the players will play from the name, same name as the Premier Club I hope before I go that we can finalise a date and a schedule for the league to start how is the support uh, you get from the government and the amputee? As a World Amputee Football Federation, we don't get any support at the moment from governments. What we are is we're more the governing body. Um, what we also do at the moment is we are, um, as the world governing body, we are making that connection with FIFA. FIFA at the moment are working on a project called Para Football. And what they hoped to do is they took 12 footballing disciplines around the world. All had to have regular competitions, confederations, uh, and regular sort of playing opportunities, grassroots, and there was a criteria. Amputee football has met that. FIFA at the moment is putting together a document. It was meant to be finished in March, but I'm sure it will be out before the end of the year. And the document will then be sent to the football federations. Football federations will then be able to claim some funding from FIFA um, on for, for projects within any of these 12 projects. It depends on how many of these projects they have, depends on how much funding they'll be able to claim. Uh, we as the Am World Amputee Football Federation at the moment have just finished, everyone wants to see us in, in uh, Paralympics, and at the moment we just finished a classification system uh, by IPC classification officers. Uh, who are working within these fields and uh, within their various countries. And um, we are now just at the moment putting together a document with uh, VADA for anti-doping. And when that's done, we, we will submit our application to, uh, to IPC. It won't be the next, but we hope after Paris we will be invited as a guest sport that will again take our sport to another level. But for the moment, the biggest thing for me is that Football federations recognise and have football inclusions, so and the uh, confederation, so the African confederation recognises uh, amputee football confederation, and uh, that then FIFA we are working with them. So once we are all part of this football family, um, th the sport will go. But we have to start on the grassroots, and, and again I can can't thank uh, Zanzibar uh, Football Federation for for the openness to sit down and talk. You know, it's not always about money. It's about how can we share resources. You know, to give us the use of the facilities. It's not good that the players should play in the park and put their legs and they have, don't have fresh drinking water. Small things like this, they make a big difference. The other thing is, is we asked the Zanzibar Football Federation to work with us with coach education, child protection policies, uh, different regulations according to Zanzibar law uh, that they work with us. When the players see this, if we treat the players as athletes, they will become athletes. You know, And we hope that in time we can sit down and discuss bringing, it's better that we bring international teams here and make heroes of them at home than taking them to abroad to play in other tournaments. Let's educate people in Zanzibar what an, an amazing, what a fantastic, inspiring project we are all working on. This is not mine. It's not there. It's not. This is, belongs to everyone in Zanzibar. So together, we can do anything. 